All right, in the first video, we talked about um, the derivative, and I said to think about the derivative as just equal to the slope. Uh, we quickly saw that that wasn't quite sufficient for our definition, because slopes we only have defined for straight lines, right? And we want to be able to understand derivatives of all functions of all sorts of different curves. So in this video, we're going to go a little bit more into depth of what a derivative is. Um, so a more concrete definition, the derivative of a function at a given point is the slope of the line tangent to that function at the given point. So that seems like a mouthful, but we'll kind of slowly break apart this definition right here, and then we'll be able to understand the derivative of a function at a given point. So that'll be the goal for this video. Um, okay, picking apart this definition, maybe the first thing that gives people trouble is this idea of a tangent line. Um, if I just draw a couple of curves, people are typically pretty good about guessing what the tangent line looks like. For example, in this curve over here, if I say, what's the tangent line at this point right here? Most people would sort of guess that, oh, that must be this line right here. And they'd be right. And similarly, if I said, okay, what about on this curve? Can you draw the tangent line at this point? Be like, oh yeah, it's kind of this guy right here. Doesn't quite intersect the line, it sort of just touches the curve at that point. It doesn't really intersect it. All oh, these aren't great concrete mathematical definitions. Um, what if I said, find the tangent line at this point? Maybe you'd guess it would be something like that, and you'd be correct. I mean, in this case, we do kind of cross over the curve but it's still, there's sort of some property in here that it's tangent, it just sort of touches the curve at that point. But it's pretty hard to come up with what the definition of a tangent line is. Um, in fact, what we'll do is we'll understand a different concept and then think of the tangent line in terms of that concept. But I just want to sort of draw a couple of examples here to give you a bit of an idea of what the tangent line is. But really, none of those, I mean, that idea of just sort of looking at stuff isn't going to be sufficient. We'll need a more concrete definition. So the way we'll think about the tangent line is we'll think about it as the limit as points get close. I'll explain what I mean by that. Of the secant lines. So, okay, I just defined a term tangent in terms of this other term secant, and you probably don't know the definition, or you might not know the definition of either of those right now, so it might seem like we didn't help at all. But it turns out that secants are a lot easier to understand than tangents. So let's start out with the function here. Maybe we got a curve that looks something like this. So we can sort of just draw the tangent line based on our intuitive idea of what the tangent line is. And it's this green line right here that we want to come up with the slope of. And sure, you can kind of look at the green line and kind of estimate what it is, but that's not a method that's going to work for us long term, right? We're not going to want to always have to draw the function and sort of try to draw the tangent line based on some intuition and then estimate the slope of that line. We want to be a lot more precise than that. So what we'll do is we'll think about secant lines. Secant lines we can be really precise with. Okay, so what a secant line is, as opposed to a tangent line, is with the secant line you get two points. So if we want the secant line between this point right here, this green dot, and this light blue dot up here, all we gotta do is connect those two dots. The big advantage of using two different points is it makes it really easy to calculate the slope. Right, maybe you remember that the slope is just the change in the y value divided by the change in the x value. Rise over run is somehow sometimes how it's presented. Um, so if we call this point right here x2, y2, and this point down here, this green point, x1, y1, then the slope of this light blue line we can figure out by using this equation right here. And what I want to point out is this is really nice because if we're given the equation of this function, the red curve right here, 
we'll be able to calculate exactly what this point is right here and exactly what this point is right here. So we'll be able to calculate exactly what the slope of the secant line is. So it won't be a matter of trying to graph the function and look at what the line looks like and guess. We'll be able to just look at the equation of the function and calculate exactly what the slope of the secant line is. And so, okay, maybe you're like, yeah, that's great, but we've only calculated the slope of the secant line. We haven't, our goal is to get calculate the slope of this tangent line. And we can't really use a similar method because we only have one point when we're figuring out the tangent line. So you couldn't figure out a slope like we do here with the secant line. So what we'll do is instead of thinking about the tangent line as this line that we get from one single point, we'll think about the tangent line as the limit of secant lines when the two points get really, really close together. It'll be hard to draw, but picture if our second point, instead of being way over here, was really, really close to our first point, maybe right next to it right here. If you drew the line connecting these two dots, it would look a whole lot like this green line, a whole lot like this tangent line. And the idea behind a tangent line is if you let the secant lines get arbitrarily close, that limit, we'll define what I mean more by limit later, of these secant lines will be our tangent line. So if that makes sense, maybe we'll do a concrete example now of exactly how to calculate the slope of a tangent line. All right, so here's a more concrete example. This is actually the example we used in the first video. Um, we have this function g of x, and we want to find the derivative of this function, g prime of x. And before we even figure out what this is, we'll kind of save this for another video. Let's first just figure out what the derivative of this function is at this point right here. What is the slope when x equals 1? In the first video, so first of all, some notation. You can write that like this. This is saying the derivative of this function when x equals 1. Um, so in the first video, I claimed that this was equal to 2. I said that the slope of this green line right here was 2. But I never really proved it or anything. Um, in this video, we'll sort of try to understand that a little bit. And so remember, the way we're going to think about the slope of the tangent line is by thinking of the slope of the secant lines. But specifically, the secant lines when the points get really, really close together. So the points that we'll use in our formula is down here is x1, y1. That's this red point right here. And let's see, that's equal to 1, 0. The x-coordinate here is 1, the y-coordinate is 0. And then we'll take another point and let that point, another point on this blue curve right here. So maybe we start with this guy up here, right? This point up here, we can call that x2, y2. And let's see, this is your x value is equal to 2 here and your y value is equal to 3. So the slope of the secant line between this red point and this light blue point, the slope of that line right there, we can get at, maybe we'll call that m1. So this slope right here, m1. And m1 is going to be equal to the change in y. That is y2 minus y1 divided by the change in x. And if we plug in our values, let's see, y2, the height here is 3. The height here is 0. And the x value up here is 2. And the x value down here is 1. So we get 3 over 1, or 3. So the slope of the secant line between these two points is 3. We want to know the slope of the tangent line, the slope of this green line right here. Intuitively, the way to think about it is the slope of this green line is the slope of the secant line when this point gets really, really close to this point. So I won't actually draw it because it'll be hard to see in this picture, but what if instead of our second x value being 2, being way out here, we let our second x value be maybe 1.1. So we're letting this light blue point get really, really close to this red point. So the red point will be the same, the x value is still 1. The y value of this red point right here is still 0. The y value of this light blue point, when you move its x value down to 
we can figure that out. That's just g of 1.1 which is 1.1 squared minus 1. If you put 1.1 into this equation up here, um, and if you pull out a calculator, what you'll see is that this is equal to 0.21. Then if you try to evaluate this thing right here, um, we end up with 0.21 divided by 0.1, which is equal to 2.1. And so what I want you to see is that as we let this second point get closer and closer to the point that we want our tangent line to be at, the slope goes from 3 down to 2.1. And maybe you can imagine that if we got even closer, instead of 1.1, maybe we chose 1.0001, this value would end up getting really, really close to 2. And what this approach is will end up being our answer for the slope of the tangent line, the, this green slope right here. So what this is giving us, what I want this all to lead up to is the first big definition the definition of the derivative. So I'll write it in general terms, but think about it in terms of this example. The definition of the derivative to a function f, we'll just name the function, at a point maybe a. So this point right here, this red point, we'll call the point A, its x value we'll call A. And this function right here, we use g in this example, but we'll use f in our definition, it's just the name of the function. The definition of the derivative to a function f at a point A will be this right here. And let me explain how this right here is exactly what we did up here. Okay, first of all, the limit as x approaches a. So what I want you to think of is x is the blue point. The blue point in this graph that we let get really, really close to this red point right here. So what we'll call a will be the red point in this picture up here. So what we're doing here is we're going to define something in terms of a secant line but we're gonna let the two points, the blue point, get really, really close to the red point. That's what this notation means here. The way you say this is the limit as x approaches a. And we'll review limits a little bit more in the next video. So this right here, the definition of the derivative, we're hoping that it'll make sense that it's the slope of this green line right here. And so what it is, is if you break down this side, f of x minus f of a, okay, f of x, is saying the height of this light blue point and f of a is the height of this red point. So really in this notation up here, this right here is y2 and this is y1. And then this right here is x2, right? Remember the x value is our light blue dot. So it's x value minus a, which is just the x value in this red point right here. So really this definition that might look completely new is just doing what we did up here, except instead of picking a point that's really close to the point we're interested at, we're saying, okay, let's let x be a variable and we'll let that variable get really, really close to, that's what this limit means, the point that we're interested in right here. So the way we'll come up with the slope of this green line right here is by using this definition. We'll have to understand limits a little bit in order to evaluate what this means. So in the next video, we'll kind of take a step back and just review limits and make sure you understand what limits are. But I, don't, I didn't want to just get into limits because you might not understand why we need them for this class. So really, the reason you need limits is because the way we'll think about the slope of this green line is it's just a, it's what these light blue lines approach as the two points get really, really close together. And that idea of really, really close together comes into play in this limit right here. So that's the definition of the derivative. And in the next video, we'll learn how to evaluate this thing.